I was born uh, on a small farm uh, in Virginia, northern Virginia, not uh, far, a couple miles out of Herndon, uh, from Herndon, Virginia, and uh, the first of 10 children. Uh, loved farming. I loved everything about the work. Uh, we had horses. Uh, that was our <laughs> means of plowing uh, and all. Uh, we couldn't afford tractors. Uh, I loved horses and uh, really intended to be a farmer. And if it had not been for the Korean War, I probably would not have gotten away from the farm. But the Korean War started, and when I could get a break from pricing wheat and making hay, I visited a Marine recruiter and ended up uh, enlisting. Wesley Fox enlisted in the Marine Corps in 1950. Contrary to his plans to be a farmer, he wound up instead staying in the military for 43 years and rising to the rank of colonel. Fox served two tours of duty in Korea as a Marine rifleman and later as a platoon sergeant. His defining moment, however, would come during the Vietnam War. My assignment was with the Vietnamese Marines as an advisor, battalion, infantry battalion advisor. The Tet Offensive caught me halfway through that tour, but uh, basically I was not happy with the way the Vietnamese handled the war. It was too much of what I classified as search and avoid instead of search and destroy operations. Uh, we didn't take the fight to the enemy. Bottom line is I extended six months in Vietnam to go north with our Marines because I knew they knew how to take the fight to the enemy. I was a first lieutenant by that time, and even though a Marine rifle company's company commander normally is a captain, I had hopes of getting a company as a first lieutenant. And as luck would have it, I did end up as the company commander of Alpha 1st Battalion, 9th Marines. That was a, a good experience throughout the whole six months, but I think the highlight of the whole tour and Vietnam experience, of course, was my fight on 22 February 1969, in which uh, my mission was to, to see if an enemy unit was where it was the day before, if it was, do something about it. Well, I found them, they were where there, and I locked into them, uh, only to find they were a bigger force than my small understrength rifle company. Uh, at that time, I was down less than 90 Marines from a 240-man uh, rifle company. The fight started, I had two platoons uh, in the assault, in an assault formation moving through, through that jungle towards the sounds of the mortar tubes that were popping in. At that point, the, the enemy also had a machine gun that was firing in the trees, so, so we had a focal point. Uh, there, there was like, here we are, come get us, and we did that. Two platoons up and one in reserve, so on that rainy, miserable, cloudy day when we couldn't use air, artillery, anything else. It was nothing but a rifleman's fight. Early in that fight, I lost all my platoon leaders, killed or wounded. So the leadership was not really there. But again, what I'm saying, it was, it was each Marine's motivation to take the fight to the enemy, moving to the sounds of the enemy's guns. The point where I realized that it's a bigger force than what mine was was when my assault stalled. And at that point, I moved along my forward uh, Marines in that jungle. Each Marine that I saw was down. And unless he was firing his rifle, he appeared uh, probably impressed that he was a casualty. At that point, I realized it's a stronger force than mine, <clears throat> and I, what I would like to do is break contact, sorry guys, and get out of here. I thought that I was hurt worse than I was. I realized that when I break contact, I've got to get all my casualties out. I'm not leaving anybody. I'm going to lose more Marines doing that, and then I probably won't have enough to defend us to, with the 
carrying the wounded and, and we're going to have our hands full and we won't be able to fight. So at, at that point, one thing I did was made the decision that we'll win this fight, we'll either walk out or we'll all stay in the valley. And I called my reserve platoon commander up and told him to take his platoon in the attack between the center of my two attacking platoons. A mortar or a rocket propelled grenade, I'm not sure which it is, landed uh, amongst us at about the time that he understood the order and seriously wounded that platoon commander. My company executive officer, Lieutenant Lee Heron, was standing there. He had heard what I told Jim Davis to do, and Lee wasn't hurt. So I asked, uh, told Lee to take the second platoon in the attack, which Lee did. As the reserve platoon slammed forward, the executive officer was struck down by machine gun fire. With the platoon now leaderless, Fox stepped in, reorganizing the company and directing their fire. Together, they hurled grenades into the enemy ranks and drove them into retreat. Though wounded in the final assault, Fox refused medical attention. Instead, he established a defensive position to ensure the safe evacuation of his wounded buddies. My battalion commander, uh, a couple of days after the fight, I was in his CP, he was on the ridge with us. Uh, my company, Alpha and Charlie, were on the ridge with the battalion command group. And uh, I, for whatever reason, was in his CP, getting some guidance of what we're gonna do, I guess. And I'm on my helmet, seated on my helmet, and he tells me he's gonna put me in for the Medal of Honor. Well, I almost fell off my helmet. I, I couldn't believe it. So this was January of, of 70, it was approved on Nixon's desk. I didn't get it until March of 71, a year and three months later, waiting for the right political climate. Being a Marine at that point, I'd had uh, 22 years in the Marine Corps, so uh, I, I was pleased and proud to receive the medal for what my company did, for what we did on 22 February. A lot of our countrymen don't know what the Medal of Honor is, and that's, uh, one of the tasks that the Medal of Honor Society has is making our young people aware and our countrymen aware of uh, what our servicemen have done and, and along the way some of the recognitions that, uh, that they get. Again, I'm, I'm pleased and proud to, to wear it for the Marine Corps and what my Marines did on, on that particular fight. Again, I'm I feel a little bit of an emptiness in knowing that there were others deserved in that fight that were not, not awarded. Again, because nobody was there to tell the story.